Hello everyone. Thank you for allowing me to be here. I'm so happy to have the chance to speak with you all. My name is Jamil Wilson and I'm here today because I am a complete idiot. Yes, you heard me correctly. And for those who didn't, I'll repeat myself. My name is Jamil Wilson and I'm here speaking with you all today because I am a complete idiot. As I'm sure you can imagine, my speech to you all didn't quite start off this way. Uh, at first, it went something like, I'm an up-and-coming aquatic scientist working on this or that and trying to find my way in the world. While that is true, as I thought about it, I realized I'd be doing you all a huge disservice if I wasn't completely honest with you. I'm really here speaking to you now because somewhere along the way, I decided to become and remain an utter fool. And I'm hoping that today you all will join me if you haven't already. Now I know all the people that invited me here are probably looking at me a little sideways like, mm, what's happening right now? But stay with me. I'd like to tell you a quick story if I might. I remember when I first got my chance at entering the world of STEM. And I remember knocking on a dark colored door and upon its opening seeing the new mentor that my program had assigned to me. I walked in and after exchanging pleasantries, we soon got to the real reason for my visit there. My new mentor looked at my resume, my grades, then at me and said to me candidly, Jamil, to be honest with you, I don't know if you're gonna work out on this program. You don't really have any sort of science background and usually the students I work with are a bit more experienced. Well, he was right, of course. Prior to that meeting, I had been studying music and dedicated four to five years of my life to that subject. Still, I was there in his office, sitting across from him, staring him in the face as if convinced that this was what I was going to do. Thankfully, he bought the fire in my eyes, and to this day, we're good friends because of it. However, at the time, I still hadn't. Not completely. And it wasn't that that fire wasn't there, but I still had no idea if things were going to work out. With no prior lessons or experience, I was essentially jumping headfirst into the ocean to find out if I could swim. Sounds like something only an idiot would do, right? But that was my first real experience in pursuit of my STEM-related path. A path filled with doubts and fears, and not just from others, but from within. Could I do this? Was I being a complete idiot? Well, I think you know the answer to that now. Some of you may be wondering why I keep associating myself with something so negative. Why would this guy call himself an idiot? The quick answer to that question is because I believe being an idiot is actually one of the most powerful things you can be. Now, I'm sure everyone who invited me here is practically pulling their hair out, but it's true. Being a fool is really valuable. That along with some other things that I'll get to later. But for now, with that being said, you might be wondering, well, how can that be? So to explain and answer all of these questions, let's dig into our STEM roots a little bit more and employ the good old scientific method, which you may be familiar with. It's composed of a question, research about the subject in question, an experiment or test, and finally, uh, analysis and conclusion. So we already have our first part, right? The most important part, which is the question. Why would this guy call himself an idiot and how would being an idiot be helpful? The second part of our method is researching the topic, so let's do that. The word idiot typically has a bad meaning, right? I mean, you don't go around calling your mother that word because depending on how you're being raised, that might mean you're getting popped in the mouth or plopped in the corner. I was part of the first group, but that's neither here nor there. But we typically don't use that word because it's usually used as an insult or a way to belittle someone and make them feel small. That's not what I'm here to encourage you to do. However, I am here to help you understand that words have a duality to them and can sometimes get overlooked. For instance, words like failure, fool, and fear are demonized when more often than not, these are the very words that help characterize and define our growth not just as scientists or developers or even high school students, but as human beings. 
we currently have all these amazing technologies and advancements and knowledge because of our failures, our foolishness, and our fears. Take a second to think about it. In our fear of death, we've managed to develop medicines that can elongate the human lifespan by decades. It was only because of our multiple failures over the centuries did we learn how to create giant metal flying machines. And many times it was due to our own idiocy that we were curious enough to go against the safety of social norms and discover things like the curvature of the earth. All things that at a certain time you would have been considered an idiot for just by merely thinking the same or otherwise. Yet, they are all things that we now know to be true. And if you didn't know, well, now you know. In a society that only focuses on successes and winning and bravery and intelligence, I feel like I'm describing Gryffindor, which is really funny because I'm surrounded by Harry Potter right now. But when you live in a society that only focuses on being a Gryffindor, it's sometimes hard to associate yourself with anything outside of that. I mean, no one wants to be a Hufflepuff. No, I'm sure someone does. But really, no one wants to be associated with failure. No one wants to be afraid, and no one wants to be considered an idiot. However, time and time again, we've learned that these good and bad words are simply mirrors of each other. Like life and death, one cannot work or exist without the other. So now we can say that we've done some of our research. We now know that the bad words can not only have different meanings, but they can be good for us. So it's time for our hypothesis. If we incorporate these bad words, fear, foolishness, and failure into our lives, they will improve the value and quality of our lives. That's gonna be our hypothesis, all right? Of course, next comes actually testing our hypothesis. So let's do that. Now on this, I can only speak about my own experiences. This is part of things you'll have to test out for yourself. And some of you will involuntarily. But for now, I'm going to tell you about my experience and we'll use that as our experiment for testing how these words can improve the quality of one's life. When I was close to graduating high school, I was completely lost. I had no idea how to even start college. To top it off, my grades were average at best, and out of my classmates, I was considered the class clown. Not because I horsed around, but because I happened to be in a competitive program, and in comparison, my scores always ended up being less impressive than those around me, and I hated it. So in an attempt to be smart, once I figured out how to get to college, I went for vocal music, because at the time, it was the only thing I felt good at. It was something that I seemed to have an inherent talent for, and for once I just wanted to shine. Still, with my average grades and no parental help or guidance, it meant no scholarships, and so I ended up paying my way through college with no less than three jobs the entire time, which is not recommended. After a while of music school though, I found that I didn't like the direction my life was heading in. It felt all-consuming in a destructive way, and I was realizing that before my self-esteem issues in high school, I had actually always loved biology. But at this point, I was so afraid to change majors. I mean, how could I when I had already committed so much time to this? So with that in mind, I kept my desire at bay, and for three years, I studied music until I took my first college bio class. And after that, it was pretty much a wrap. I finally stood up to myself and opted to switch majors. Of course, when you do something like that after three years, uh, everybody's got concerns and comments. Uh, one of them, or a lot that I got, was, ooh, bio is hard. Is this really a smart move? Are you sure about this? However, I'd like to note that the great thing about being an idiot is that no matter how impossible or illogical something seems, an idiot will still try it anyways. And so as you can imagine, I tried it. I worked hard and as a result, I started doing really well. I was getting good grades, started to conduct research, I was writing papers, traveling around to different prestigious universities, making connections. I was starting to shine and those around me could see it too. 
until finally it was time to apply for graduate school. For me, graduate school was the ultimate indicator that I was actually smart, and I ended up applying to 10 schools. Now, I'll let you guess how many I got in. If you guess 10, you're right. Just omit the first digit. Yeah, I got into zero. I got nothing. Zip. It was the ultimate failure. And because I was so sure that I would get in somewhere, I had no backup plan. I couldn't believe it. I was back at square one, or what felt like square negative two. And so as an alternative, when I graduated, I decided to take a break and travel instead. And despite all the grief that I had with school, it was one of the best times of my life. During my travels, I decided to try scuba diving and fell in love with it. While doing that, I got exposed to different people and opportunities, including one called the Rolex Scholarship. Now, I was eligible for getting this scholarship, but it was impossible. I mean, it was the most prestigious diving scholarship around, picking one person out of all of North America to travel the world diving. And if I couldn't get into grad school, what hope did I have for this? But, like I said, benefits of being an idiot. So I applied, and to my surprise, I was selected. And now I'm virtually sitting here talking to you from South Africa, working on octopus research and dive training. I've traveled to various countries around the world, met amazing people, and done some amazing things. Overall though, my point is that even though I traveled and I've done all these great things, none of them would have been possible if I hadn't gone through those hard moments uh, and had those terrible fears and those foolhardy moments and those epic failures. Over and over again, these words have actually improved the quality of my life. And the same has been said for various people in various careers that we consider successful. I mean, if you look at Barack Obama or Oprah, they've all gone through these things. So now that our hypothesis has been tested, it's time to analyze our data and devise a conclusion. I think we can safely say that despite the hurtful way that these words can make us feel on the surface, the benefits and good they provide in the long run vastly outweigh the pain. It's these experiences that help us grow and succeed. And as you go into your STEM fields and explore your passions, I wanna share these three nuggets of wisdom with you. If you remember nothing else from my time with you, remember these three doctrines. One, when you face failure, remember failure is not the opposite of success, but an integral part of it. You can try and fail a million times, but the true failure is when you stop trying. Now, that doesn't mean that if you find something that's not for you, you should keep pursuing it. But it does mean that if you want something bad enough, it will be for you. Two. When you're faced with fear, remember that oftentimes the things that we fear tend to be the things that are the most worthwhile. Now, does that mean if you're scared of heights that you should jump out of a plane? Absolutely. Just make sure you take a parachute. And lastly, when you're being called out as a fool, try to remember that dreams can only be met by those foolish enough to believe in them. Basically meaning, don't settle and let what only seems impossible actually be impossible. So as you go out in the world and you're faced with some of these things, don't shy away from them. Take ownership of them and they'll help you grow more than you ever thought possible. Fail often, face your fears. And as Steve Jobs once said, stay foolish. Thank you guys so much for having me and good luck in your STEM endeavors. I have full faith in you.